Hi, I'm Charles Minlin. Welcome to this edition of Tradition Talk. I'm with USF legend Bill Cartwright. Bill, thanks for joining us today. Charles, I'm very pleased to be here. You were obviously a great player from uh, the 70s and you had a great career here. So what was your mindset coming in as a, as a freshman? Well, the biggest thing was coming from high school, I came in with a really good group of guys. So I was really very fortunate to have that happen. And uh, I'm kind of a local kid, I'm from Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So my mindset of coming in here was that I was gonna have an opportunity to play. Uh, we were a really young team, so it was like we were building something. And I knew of the great USF tradition of the players from the 50s, uh, 60s, the guys before me. And of course, Bill Russell, Casey Jones. And my coach at that time was uh, Bob Gaylord, who uh, was a great player here. And as a matter of fact, um, he held the uh, single game scoring record. So um, we're really bonded. I felt like I was bonded to come here. So was location a big factor in making your decision? Well, California was. I didn't want to go outside of California. And coming here and meeting guys like Phil Smith, uh, Eric Bergsten, Kevin Rastani, um, Howard Smith, uh, these guys really uh, put themselves forth to me and really made me feel comfortable in, in, in coming here and being wanted here and with a basic understanding that we could do something really great. What were uh, some of your best memories at USF? Well, my freshman year, we had our probably our biggest challenge was getting past uh, Pepperdine, which had uh, Dennis Johnson. And this uh, probably the best center I had played against at that point in time, this guy, Marcos Leite. Now, this guy, <laughs> this guy was good. He was really good, so I learned a lot of lessons from him. But uh, just getting that experience my, my, my freshman year, coming in here, getting acclimated to playing, and then uh, uh, my sophomore year, um, we, we had a great team um, with myself, Whitford James, uh, featured, and, and Marlon Renman, uh, and for the season, so we went 29-0. Unfortunately, uh, we were never ranked number one in the country. So that was a, a tremendous year of, uh, of play, playing together. Just had a lot of fun that year and great team camaraderie. So uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, our last two games. But I've, I've, I've always felt that that season was really special. Yeah, yeah I'm sure there are a lot of uh, relationships that were grown there. Like, has the was there always smooth or was there uh, tough times throughout it too? Well, I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was always about the work. It was always about the hard work. It was always about the extra work and doing whatever it took. And what, what I, the, the main things that I learned here at USF was um, our coach Bob Gator was a, a really good teacher of basketball. and. Uh, I remember him telling me when I was a freshman, hey Bill, look, we know you're gonna play hard. Now we're gonna, we wanna teach you how to play smart. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that because um, basketball is really understanding clearly what, you, what your intentions are and what your opponents are. So it's, uh, it, it fit right in with me. Um, to, to have that understanding of yourself and your opponent. Yeah. Do you have any advice for me as a freshman just uh, approaching uh, college basketball this year and like things to expect? Well, you know, I, I think the big thing is you just learn. You just learn, um, learn, learn the conference. You, l you learn from other players. Um, I'm a big believer in learning by, by watching. Um, especially guys who are successful. Uh, I can remember when I was a kid, um, my cousin was a uh, all-city basketball player. He was about four years older than me, so I'd go over and practice with him. And that dude was good. 
was really good. So I ended up emulating a lot of his moves and his philosophy. So um, I just spent a lot of time learning. Basketball is like a, it's like a classroom that you have to understand clearly uh, why things happen and, and why things happen simply. And the same thing with Bruce Lee. It's it's what is your what are your opponent trying to do and why are they doing that and uh, what is going to make it really hard for them to score. So and it's and it's a classroom. It's something that you think about that you talk to your teammates about that you talk to your coaches about. Uh, what are they trying to do? What kind of team are they? What kind of player is this? So um, it's just really becoming a student of, 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 of basketball. And once that happens, all that energy that I was using, I used a lot less because I had a clear understanding of, of how to play. Yeah, obviously uh, you've played on some really amazing teams. Uh, what do you think made those teams so special? That's a good word, special, because timing is everything. Um, I was in New York for nine years. Um, we had some great teams there. One of my first teammates was Earl Monroe, and my first coach was Red Holzman. So two Hall of Famers right there. I played with uh, Bernard King. So we, we had some really incredible talent in New York. We were just not able to overcome the teams that were in the position where they had it all together. They had their stars together and they had a really strong team until I went to Chicago. Now you gotta understand that clearly in 88 when I went to Chicago, we were not ready to win. And it took two years to overcome the dreaded Detroit Pistons. During that two year period we grew up and everybody dedicated themselves to working for each other and working together. So, and we were lucky. We had two future Hall of Famers on our team. Um, and we had a Hall of Fame coach. You've won three straight championships with the Chicago Bulls. So what was it like to grow that tradition and that culture? I think it, it comes down to, and this is easy to say, <laughs> you hear it all the time, but it comes down to your work ethic mm -hmm. and holding yourself accountable. Because if you're not willing to work, look, everybody works. Everybody works. So what makes you any special? You gotta work harder and you gotta do more than your opponent. Because they're they're getting ready for you. You've got to really get ready. You've got to be in the best shape of your life mentally and physically so and also you can't be afraid to hold others accountable as well but first you got to start with yourself and you hold yourself to a really high standard uh, so it starts during the summer uh, it starts at practice uh, and then now during the game uh, it's, it's the same thing. It's just getting in there, working uh, to do your best and, and bring your best game uh, every game. There are no off games. You gotta bring it, bring your best game. You can't be tired. Uh, you got all night to be tired. Uh, you, got the, you got all morning to be tired. You can't be tired, so uh, because each of these games will never be played again. It's only one. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, academics. What was it like uh, being a student athlete at that time? Um, I loved it. I loved being a college student. Uh, look, I was away from home for the first time. It was here at USF that um, you know, my mind became open to the fact that I could do anything. Uh, here, uh, you saw guys talking about being corporate CEOs and really doing what they wanted to do. And I'm like, wow, really? I could do that? That was a real awakening for me. 
Charles, can I take a minute here to ask you a couple of questions? Of course. What's been your, your busy, biggest obstacle since you've been here at USF? I think the biggest thing, especially as a freshman, is uh, just the expectations that you have as a freshman and the expectations you have for yourself. And uh, for me, I think the biggest thing is just trying to be as consistent as possible. Uh, like you said, there are no off games, and we really don't have off days, at least mentally. Like, you're always, you're always focused in the game. Or if you take a break, then you always have to make sure that you, when you come back, you're ready to go. So uh, just staying consistent every single day, making sure that I try to bring the best that I can, and uh, just trying to consistently improve has probably been the biggest for me. What do you do really well as a basketball player? And what do you need to work on? I think the best thing for me that I have is just I'm a threat offensively, whether that would be uh, scoring or assisting or just doing things on the offensive end. But uh, Coach Smith, he always uh, focuses on the three keys, uh, defending, rebounding, and taking care of the basketball. So I think just improving on those like every single day and trying to get better at those, I think that would be, uh, that would just bring me to the next level like, as a player. Charles, after basketball, after you get done uh, playing basketball, or after you get done um, in college, what do you see yourself doing? Um, well, hopefully I can play basketball after college. If I can, that would be great. But uh, if not, um, right now I'm a computer science major, and I, one of the reasons why I decided to come here was because of the location and just the community and the mindset of the people at this university. And uh, I know some people might think it's corny, but uh, change the world from here is like one of the really uh, important models for me. And I actually, for a little bit, I had that as my screensaver, just to remind me uh, one of the reasons why I'm here, to try to make the biggest impact that I possibly can. So whether that be uh, helping people that uh, need it, whether it be uh, children or older people, anything that I can to just make the best impact on the world as, I, as possible. Bill, I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you for joining us on Tradition Talk. Charles, thanks for having me, and good luck this season. Thanks.